Global supply chains are on the brink of collapse. Average shipping times from Asia to the US have doubled from 40 days to 80 days. This has naturally led to shipping costs becoming far more expensive. So expensive that the IMF believes that shipping costs alone could add 1.5% worth of inflation in 2022. This has very real implications for consumers like me and you. Companies like Walmart and Target have thus far resisted the urge to pass these higher costs on to customers. But now it's taking a big toll on their earnings. And let's just say that investors are becoming displeased to say the least. So these price safe havens being few and far between might not be around for much longer. Global inflation is hitting highs not seen for decades and the likelihood of a recession is increasing day by day. But just how bad is the global supply chain crisis? How did we even get here? And most importantly, how are we going to get out? The supply chain crisis was initially caused by two contributory factors, the pandemic and demand. COVID-19 and the international lockdowns which came with it had devastating effects on the flow of goods and services across international markets. Workers were forced to isolate at home, factory floors were obligated to introduce and abide by new health standards, and ultimately everything came to a halt. Incidents like the Suez Canal blockage in March 2021, which by the way held up an estimated 9.6 billion billion dollars worth of trade per day served only to exacerbate the strain being felt. Fast forward two years and we're still facing the same problems. China's zero tolerance policy towards COVID is not only devastating for its citizens, but it's also inciting further supply chain complications. It's estimated that over 200,000 US companies and over 118,000 EU companies have supply chain dependencies in Shanghai, a port which has seen severe congestion and back logs relating to shipping containers as a result of lockdowns. All of this is before you consider the impact that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is having on global supply chains, with Russia being a major exporter of commodities and other products. The war is not only impacting exports, but also the routes by which we receive our global supply, with the likes of key logistical airspace being shut down. So clearly, major events like the pandemic and the war have hindered supply chains. If you were to ask people why there's disruptions, they would probably give you those two reasons. But most people probably wouldn't talk about demand. In October 2021, the demand for durable goods was 40% higher than it was just three years prior. How did this happen? During COVID, full households were required to isolate and work from home in lockdown. This naturally resulted in less spending and more saving. In 2020, Irish households saved over 31 billion euro, which is three times higher than before the pandemic. Similar savings rates were seen in the US, the UK, throughout Europe, and in China. On top of saving more and spending less, households were also receiving monetary support from the government. In the US, individuals and families received $1.8 trillion in pandemic stimulus money, with businesses receiving $1.7 trillion. All of this resulted in lots of pent-up demand by consumers. And unfortunately, our global supply chain simply didn't have the capacity to meet that demand. So what happens when there's an increase in the level of demand for goods and services in the economy without a corresponding increase in supply? We get inflation. Too many dollars chasing too few goods causes the price of those goods to increase. The global supply chain crisis has sparked the worst bout of inflation in four decades in both the UK and the US, while Eurozone inflation continues to set record highs. This has put significant pressure on global global central banks to restore price stability in the economy. It's becoming increasingly difficult for average households to maintain their standard of living as energy and food costs soar, especially when those households aren't seeing their wages grow at the same rate as inflation, which for all intents and purposes is the equivalent of a pay cut. But rising wages could only serve to worsen inflation in what's known as a wage price spiral. Again, something that central banks want to avoid. As we discussed, the supply chain crisis is the result of both pent-up demand and disruptions to global supply chain systems. Global central banks only have control over the demand side of the equation. Their goal right now is to lower the demand for goods and services in order to take the pressure off of prices. And to achieve that, they're increasing interest rates. US Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has said that the central bank will not hesitate to keep increasing interest rates until inflation comes under control. And we know that the European Central Bank is going to follow suit in July. 
supply, albeit by an unknown percentage. That's worrying not only for stock market investors, as we discussed in our last video, but also for each and every one of us as members of society. Higher interest rates not only means higher mortgage payments, but they also mean lower output by companies, which puts economies at risk of recession. Economists have given a 30% chance for a recession in the United States within the next year, which is double the odds that were predicted just three months ago. And while recessions might be necessary evils in the grand calculus of the economy, none of us want to see unemployment rates hit 10% like they did in 2009, especially when mortgage rates are rising. But how are companies being impacted by all of this? Yes, we as consumers are feeling the pinch of the supply chain crisis through higher prices. But what challenges are the companies we buy from facing? The automotive industry is one of the more interesting cases. Car sales in Europe have fallen by more than 20% year over year since April 2021. In fact, according to the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, sales have been struggling since July 2021, with April's sales results being the worst since records began. This is largely down to the shortage of semiconductors, which has rocked the industry. Peter Hassenkamp, who was ex-head of supply chain strategies at Tesla, has a fantastic quote saying it takes two and a half thousand parts to build a car, but only one not to. That's exactly the case with semiconductors, which are essential components to modern vehicles. The global chip shortage, which again was sparked by the global pandemic and the unprecedented level of demand which followed, has prevented car manufacturers from completing vehicles. According to the Harvard Business Review, in 2021, automakers cancel plans to build 10 million cars, with a further 7 to 8 million forecasted for 2022 and 4 million in 2023. And semiconductor demand is currently outstripping supply by 10%. So it's no surprise that we're seeing price inflation in both new vehicles and used vehicles, standing at 13% and 22% respectively in April. The retail sector is also facing significant challenges. The price of food in the US is up nearly 10% year over year since April. April 2021. While we as consumers feel the pinch of these price increases in our pockets, it's not until we look at the corporate level that we start to gain an understanding as to why these increases are happening in the first place. Target, one of the biggest retailers in America, undershot its most recent earnings expectations by nearly 29%, with one of the main reasons being much higher costs, particularly the cost of gasoline. Gasoline prices are still up over 80% for the year, along with many other commodities which are surging across the board. Much of the pressure on commodity prices is due to the conflict in Ukraine, as we already established that Russia is a major exporter of commodities. So what you need to realize is that companies can only shelter their customers from price increases for so long before it starts to eat into their earnings. And at the end of the day, they have shareholders to answer to. So the question remains, where do we go from here? Global supply chains will never be the same again. Last year, Joe Biden signed an executive order order for a comprehensive review of US supply chains, solely for the purpose of risk assessment and formulating a plan as to how supply chain systems could be made more resilient in the face of disruption. The report, which is 250 pages long and covers semiconductors, batteries, minerals and pharmaceuticals, stated that secure and resilient supply chains are essential for national security, economic security and technological leadership. But even outside of governmental action, companies are taking matters into their own hands. McKinsey reports that companies are investing heavily in digital supply chain solutions and plan to continue doing so going forward. If anything, the events of the last two years have shown that the global supply chain ecosystem is ripe for disruption and presents a business opportunity for startups who want to try their hand at solving this multifaceted problem. In fact, in 2021, supply chain management companies received $11.3 billion in funding, double 2020's investment total of $5.9 billion. That shows not only founder commitment to solve problems in this space, but also investor commitment to support businesses solving those problems. Ultimately, the supply chain crisis is a byproduct of our over-reliance on globalization. Supply chain systems have many different touch points all across the globe, and when one of those touch points gets disrupted, the dominoes start to fall. This is a very complex problem to solve, one which requires collaboration right across the value chain. But in a way, it's good that this has happened sooner rather than later, because now more than ever, companies are looking 
looking at ways to mitigate risk and maximize efficiencies in global supply. Hopefully we'll be prepared for disruptions in the future so that we can prevent the kind of inflationary crisis that we're seeing today from happening tomorrow. Let me know what your thoughts are on the global supply chain crisis. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.